Hey there, I'm Friendly Baron, and I think it's pretty well known that Rockstar's design of the GTA universe draws inspiration from real life without often being exact copies, which they have done in the old games and continued in the new updates for GTA Online. Some people claim it's to avoid paying expensive licensing fees that games like Forza and Need for Speed have to pay to use a vehicle's likeness, and that's probably partly true, but the mix between cartoon game world and real life designs is a great, often overlooked part of the appeal of Grand Theft Auto V, so I've decided to make a video and possibly a series of videos showing the real life inspirations Rockstar uses when making new vehicles and game modes in GTA V. This first video here, I want to cover some of the vehicles in the Arena War update, and it'd be a crime to not start with the most well-known inspiration for this update, Mad Max Fury Road. The best example of this is the Severus, specifically the Apocalypse variant. The Severus is based off the war rig from Fury Road, with a semi-truck front, extended cab using an old classic sedan, and giant fuel tank behind it. This GTA variant uses a Phantom as the truck, and the back end of a Stafford for the rear end. I think this vehicle does a great job of taking something from pop culture and turning it into a vehicle that fits into the GTA universe in terms of visuals and usefulness. Also, they match the horn quite nicely. Moving along with the Mad Max theme, the Apocalypse Imperator. The Imperator in general is based off the Pursuit Special from the original 1979 Mad Max. Being theoretically earlier in the Mad Max timeline, the car is much less rusted and cleaner looking. The styling lines of the real-life Ford Falcon it's based on and giant supercharger make it quite obvious what this is supposed to be. I've done my best to modify the cars in-game for this video to match the real-life or pop culture versions, but even without the extra customization it's often clear what Rockstar was going for. The ZR380 doesn't move us away from the Mad Max theming right away. Frustratingly, Rockstar only gave us the arena variants of this car, so even with minimal customization it still looks goofy if you just want a normal sports car. This car is a clear reference to the Nissan 350Z and 370Z, a few curves and body styles are pulled from each one. The developers over the Project Homecoming 5M server made a variant of this car with all the armor and overdone body kits removed. Looking at this version of the car, it's a bit more clear of the Nissan inspiration, and reminds us how lame it is that Rockstar didn't make a non-arena variant of this car. It's not even hidden and unreleased in the game files, it just doesn't exist. Same as the Imperator not having a normal version, only the arena versions. One of the lesser known but fan favorite references is the Apocalypse Slam Van and its reference to the Stubby Bob, a modified wheelie making machine from the web series Roadkill. If you aren't familiar with Motor Trend's Roadkill, it's basically two guys who pull cars out of barns and junkyards to revive them, often with nothing more than zip ties, duct tape, and some ingenuity, along with a slight fear of the vehicle exploding. Stubby Bob was made in episode 44 where they took a 1950s Ford dump truck and shortened it so much it was bound to do wheelies. The similarities speak for themselves, though I'll keep talking anyways since the similarities can't actually make noise. If the engine is iconic, and heck, this may be where they got the idea to add wheelies into the game in the first place. When adding it to this truck, might as well add it to all the other muscle cars too. Also, another shout out to the Project Homecoming server, as they've actually had their own version of the Stubby Bob for a few months already. It's based off the Dune Loader in-game instead of the Slam Van. We could argue about which is better for a long time, and that'll probably happen in YouTube comments anyways, but I generally think it's neat to see two different interpretations of this vehicle done in a GTA lore-friendly way. If you do want to discuss something in the comments, I am curious how people feel about Rockstar's use of real-world examples. Is it blatant copying, or a neat approach of a semi-realistic game style, both, or something else? If you haven't seen my video showing off the RC Bandito, I'll link it down below, but this is a little RC car that can be used in the Arena War Anniversary modes, and will be available for purchase, customizing, and then goofing around with in free mode soon. A few people in the comments of that video directed me to its real life examples. The main car seems to be based off the Traxxas X-Max. Jeez, that name is more X's than the average XX underscore Gamertog underscore XX. The X-Max is a top of the line electric RC car, and seems to be the core concept behind the RC Bandito. Along with the default body style, other visual lids can be put onto the Bandito. The Gang Burrito is a cool reference to another car already in GTA, but there's also the real-life lunchbox variant made by the Tamaya company that is quite similar looking. The one that had the most people excited was the Midnight Pumpkin, also from Japanese manufacturer Tamiya, 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 which lines up with the Midnight Pumpkin lid. Quite a good sexual innuendo while a nod to the original version right there, as per usual with Rockstar. 
A more niche reference that I was not aware of myself is the Apocalypse Brutus, which is basically a copy of the modified Chevy Silverado used in the 1989 movie Tango and Cash. Honestly, I've never seen it, but it had Sylvester Stallone and Kurt Russell, so it was probably just a generic buddy cop movie of that era that didn't really gain much following from what I can tell. And yes, you heard it right, I said Silverado, the truck. This thing started out as this thing. I totally thought it was a van at first, like a 1992 Chevy Lumina kind of thing, but taking a second look at it, you can see the truck inside of the body mods. It kind of makes me sad again we didn't get a stock version, which would have been uh, a cool smaller truck, which I think GTA 5 lacks, as we really only have the Rebel in that older truck style. It makes sense too, all the real life vehicles just discussed were Chevrolets, and at the class, the manufacturer of the Brutus is the stand-in for Chevy in the GTA universe. Which brings me to the next car, the Declasse Impaler. It's a pretty easy connection to draw, uh, it's a mid to late 1960s Chevy Impala. Not much more to say about it. Impaler, Impala, Impaler, Impala. Some cars I may skip or aren't worth including because the reference may be so basic. But even though the Itali GTO's similarity to the Ferrari 812 Superfast is clear, these cars are so nice to look at, I'm just going to put them in anyways. And Ferrari, by the way, you don't even name your car 812 Superfast. I think we all kind of assume Ferraris are super fast. It's like calling your bottled water brand Wet Water, or a vacuum the Suckmaster. We already know it does those things. Something a little less conventional is the Scarab, which is based off the Ripsaw that made an appearance in Fast and Furious 80. Or 8. I'm not sure how many of those movies they've made at this point. While the Ripsaw in the movie was from the US Department of Defense because with guns, you can apparently order a non-military variant, such as the luxury Ripsaw EV2, which only costs about $300,000 for civilians. They have an email on their website you can send to if you're interested in acquiring your own. Hopping back to Mad Max Fury Road for a moment, we can take a look at the Apocalypse Bruiser being based off the People Eater's Limo, which is possibly the least luxurious or the most luxurious Mercedes-Benz ever, depending on who you ask. The Glendale turn into a lifted limo perfectly matches the real-life variant. This trend continues with the Apocalypse Sasquatch, which matches the Bigfoot monster truck from Fury Road yet again. This one is a little odd, as it yet again makes a new unique vehicle that there is no such true base model in GTA, like how the Bruiser is just a Glendale we have already. The naming convention is clear too, with Sasquatch and Bigfoot being quite interchangeable. Every car mentioned so far has been Apocalypse This, Apocalypse That. The two other arena themes don't really seem to have any direct inspiration at first glance. The Future Shock theme just seems to be a general mashup of every cyberpunk thing ever, but without it being dark and grungy. The Nightmare theme is kind of a funny name, as it seems bright and generally built from things already in society instead of the dark, goopy, and made from nature stuff like how Stranger Things or other horror and nightmare media is depicted. Stay with me on this, but I think the Nightmare theme is Rockstar not going for a nightmare in the common sense of the word, but rather how they often have the cities and universes of GTA games being a parody or taking the societal tendencies to the extreme, often shown by the radios and NPC interactions with the player. The Nightmare is that of the world devolving to the worst of society, promoting unchecked capitalism and society no longer advancing into sciences and exploration. This brings me to the film Idiocracy. I'm sure there's at least one other person who has seen this movie and just had the light bulbs go off like I first did when I thought about it, but I gotta explain it once for everyone else. Idiocracy is a film from 2006 where everyone is stupid. Really damn stupid. Even stupider than YouTube comments. The main character is put into cryogenic sleep for 500 years in our current time and awakes later to an America that still exists but has deteriorated into a police state with a dumb populace, including the government being idiotic too. It's a great play on dystopian cyberpunk films, and it's not an apocalyptic story like Mad Max. Same as it rests between the apocalypse and future shock themes, and man, it ties in quite nicely. I won't spoil the rest of the film plot as I do think it's a good watch, but it does have bright colors and a world built off the old one, similar to the visual style of the Nightmare Arena theme. At a point in the movie, there is a battle involving monster trucks and other vehicles to the death in an arena. It's basically exactly the Arena War update in a nutshell there, and I think the movie as a whole definitely played a part of Rockstar's gameplay design in the Arena War concept, deadly vehicle battles in an open arena in general. Along with Idiocracy and Mad Max, the other movie that was an obvious part of the visual design and game modes was 2008's A Death Race, a movie about prisoners fighting to the death for freedom in heavily armored and modified vehicles. I think the similarity is quite clear. Best showing this is the Dominator, which looks right the part of the Mustang that the main character drives. The big shield on the back being able to pop off? Right from a scene in the movie where it's used as a weapon. It's not quite as effective in GTA, sadly.
Similar to the Slam Van's upgrade to Stubby Bob being a custom-built real-life vehicle, the Click is based off a 1950s Ford Coupe, but not just any coupe, a custom coupe made by Bruce Levin. It's pretty neat of Rockstar to pay homage to someone's pet project within the game. This is done again with the Deviant, which is based off a custom-built early 70s AMC Javelin. The custom build basically makes it look like the normal car has been hitting the gym or the steroids pretty hard. I'm going to display a few more simple comparisons from the update while I tell you about this week's sponsor. Auto no, the I wait, they don't sponsor me. Uh, Squarespace, no, Squarespace doesn't sponsor me either. Uh, maybe Skillshare, no, I, I, it appears I don't actually have any sponsors for my videos yet, so I'll just plug my own Twitch channel. I do things there daily, except for Mondays, because Mondays suck. So it's not really daily, but what are you going to do, sue me? Anyways, thanks for watching. Let me know if I missed anything, got anything wrong, how you feel about Rockstar getting inspiration for their GTA updates, and if there's any references that you know that I should include or you think I should go look up.